Welcome back to the fourth part of the 1950s buy to let refurb project. This is my very first buy to let project that I'm working on. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the thinking behind the kitchen. So what I've got on the screen here is a image that I took a few days ago. I went for a second viewing around the property just as we're about to complete all of the legals and uh, just refresh my memory on what the kitchen looks like now. The original thinking behind here was that I thought that I could potentially salvage a lot of this. So I thought the worktop was in an okay condition, that you could potentially paint the cupboards and otherwise then just take off all the tiles on the seat, uh, on the wall and then also take off all the tiles in the floor as well and completely redo the flooring and walls. But having seen it now, I think there's a few problems with this. So what you might not be able to see from the picture here, if I zoom in, minus all of the rubbish that's been left around and some random shampoo in the kitchen, you'll be able to see uh, here are two burn marks from cigarettes. So I actually found out a little bit more about the, na the, the tenants who live there from the neighbors. And it turns out the tenants that were in this house before were nightmare tenants and caused a lot of problems, very antisocial, um, had a lot of issues. So I'm not surprised to see the classic cigarette stains in furniture and items that cost a lot to replace. So unfortunately I can't salvage the worktop. It's a laminate worktop and it's been burnt through with a cigarette. So um, that's gonna have to be replaced. And then secondly, when I was looking into the cupboards in more detail, I thought the insides were okay and that we'd be able to just paint the cupboards or at least get some new doors to put on the front. But I'm now starting to lean towards just getting brand new units all together. It's a really small kitchen anyway, so it shouldn't cost too much money. And I think the total budget for this is around five, six hundred pound maximum because it is a really small um, amount of units that we need to get. But essentially what we've got, and when you're thinking about um, replacing or building or having a kitchen, is all of the units and how they plan out. Now this is really simple, there's not really any wall space, if I zoom out here, there's not really any wall space to put any cupboards on the wall, so that reduces some of the cost. So essentially all you've got is unit number one here, you've then got unit number two there, unit number three here. Sometimes two and three can be a double joined unit because that's below the sink, but it depends whether you have um, a single basin that can fit within the cupboard area, which is what I think this one is, um, or if you have the double sink and a half, then that usually is a double unit of which the sink that dropped down kind of goes into that space within the cupboard itself. But in this property, it's two separate units because the, the bowl of the sink um, purely goes into one of the two cupboards. Uh, number four here, which is just another unit. Then we've got number five, and then also here, number six. So very, very, very simple. Um, five and six is usually a joint. For some reason in this property, it's not a, um, a joint unit, but what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of six and instead you can have a double length on which I'll show you how to do that. And usually double length units are used for corners so that you can still get into that space. Otherwise that would be wasted from having the corner units as you go around the corner. So uh, we're gonna need all the units. We're gonna definitely need a new worktop. And then there's also one last issue here. So the cooker hood, is absolutely fine, that can stay. Obviously we'll take the towels off the wall around it. But what I also then realize is that it's a gas hob. So unfortunately, because I'm not going to be getting professional kitchen fitters in and I'm gonna do this myself, um, I still need to get a gas engineer into the property to make sure that the gas hob here is disconnected. So unfortunately, I can't disconnect the gas from the hob um, without a certified person. So I need to get someone in to disconnect it. And then depending on the electrics around the area, I either might put in an electric hob, a ceramic hob, if there is, um, the wiring behind there that we can use otherwise I'll then get the gas hob reconnected again so in terms of planning out this kitchen the flooring um, we're going to get a nice laminate floor in here that has a degree of water resistance to it and then also going to re take all the tiles off the wall replaster and then put some really nice tiles just to modernize it because otherwise it looks a little bit grim uh, so looking at the kitchen what I'm going to be doing is and this is the plan that you may remember from the other video that we had this is uh, one of the three renders that I've got the property. So this kind of really helps me understand what I need to do to the property, what needs to be done in each room, and just really getting a feel for the place once it's done up. So um, as you can see here, you've got this kind of annoying little um, kind of area within the wall here. So if you go back to the other screenshot, if I just open this back up again, you can see here there's like a kind of wall around here and there's a bit of a weird um, bit where it goes in. Unfortunately, because they're brick walls, they are structural, so I can't really change them without a lot of expense. So um, what I'm gonna do is just have to kind of mimic what it all looks like. So the sink is still gonna go here in the same place, it's just a little bit different on the render. And 
a good place to get kitchen units is DIYKitchens.com. Now, I've seen quite a few YouTube videos of different investors and builders and developers um, using this website. It looks really good and it's a great way to get a cheap kitchen without having to pay loads of money to Magnet, Howden's or any of the other big kitchen uh, builders and fitters. So, um, 600 millimeters, which is the width of uh, these units that I'm looking at are quite standard, 600 is the norm, however you can get um, all these units in lots of different sizes. So if you look at units here, you can choose from high line which is basically just a full cupboard, a drawer line where you have the cupboard and the drawer, but then there's loads of other options from getting loads of multi drawers, the sink units, pull out storage, waste bins, curved corners, reduced depth, uh, open units, wine racks, it goes on. There's loads of different options that you can have here. So for me, I'm just gonna have really simple drawer lines because there isn't enough space to have cupboards at the top. What I'm gonna do is have both the drawer and the cupboard in each unit, just to try and maximize as much space in that little area as possible. So here you can choose any different width possible to make it work in the space you have available. For me, around 600 is the average. So I need to properly get in and measure and I'll just determine exactly whether this is gonna be correct. But what I'll be looking at doing is getting a single sink base unit with the draw line effect. So there's not actually a draw in there, but it will look consistent, which is if I include the VAT, 66 pounds, really cheap for that single unit. And that will um, also then allow you to customize the door to put on the front as well. Uh, I'm then gonna have these ones here, which are the 600 millimeter single base units with a draw line, 109 pounds each. And going back to the drawing, we only really need one, two, th so two of those. So that's 200 pounds for these units. I need the sink unit, which was at the top, which is 66 pounds. So that covers, let's just change the color of the pen here so you'll get a feel for it. Uh, so we've basically said that uh, this one here is roughly 100. I'm drawing with a pen here. That's very, very difficult. Let's try it with the text instead. That'll make life a little bit easier. So. Let's delete this, bring this over here, and then we'll change the text. So we know that this one here is roughly 100 pounds, uh, including VAT. Likewise for this one here, we know that this one here, what do we say, 66? Yeah, let's call it 67. So we know this one is 67 for the unit. And then what we then need here in the corner is a double length unit. So on the units here, um, there are lots of different types of units, but if you go to the corner base, and we really want, we could get fancy and go for a pull out corner or L shaped. The problem is with the way the door comes out, there's not gonna be enough space there, I don't think, to make that happen. Uh, but what we can do instead, where's the page gone, I've lost it now. Uh, go to corner base and then on the corner base, we are looking for a standard corner. Now the difference here is that what you can see is that it's a double length unit. So the, door opens on one side but otherwise another unit would go here to create the corner and then continue the other way but what i'm going to do here is just put an end panel over the top so it looks nice and it's cosmetically okay and then it still has the double storage base here so that's going to be including vat let's just have a look 600 mil i won't be 600 because it's a little bit wider so that's fine so let's say we went for um around double so a thousand to 1100 uh, that would be let's have a look uh, do we want draw? Let's get one with the drawer as well. So 132 including VAT. So if I copy and paste this, so this one here is 132 including VAT. And that covers most of it. We then also have the oven housing as well. So let's go back onto the units and we're looking for the oven microwave housing. 600 millimeter width, they're all 600 by standard, which is good. Um, and then we're looking for Probably, unless we want a draw underneath, which I don't think we really do, because uh, we don't have the space, would be this one here. So the built-in under oven housing, which is only at 6652. So let's add that one onto here. I'll call it 67 and round it up. And that really completes the units of the kitchen. Really simple, really easy, and definitely able to do it yourself if it's a small project. The next bit then is the worktop on the top of it. So we're gonna have to get rid of it. So I'm gonna be using Worktop Express and um, for price sake, I'm gonna to have to use laminate because that is one of the more affordable options compared to solid uh, stone. And when I've been looking through, the one that I actually really like, bear in mind that I want to get some form of kind of dark kitchen here that contrasts with the tiles uh, and the wood kind of laminate water resistant floor. I'm thinking the gray slate option is probably the best. So this starts from 108 pounds and I need to just double check the length of the kitchen itself, but that should be 
three to four meters should be fine. So this comes in three and four meter lengths, depending on certain dimensions of also the width and kind of the distance from the wall as well. So that's something to bear in mind. So again, not too expensive. I'm gonna put here, uh, just for a little bit, I'm just gonna put 120 pounds, but otherwise I think three to four meters should cover that quite nicely. And that is most of the kitchen. So that's really part of the plan for what I'm gonna be doing. The flooring, I will show in a separate video in a bit more detail, and then also for the wall as well. But um, there's also an extra cost to get the gas engineer to disconnect the gas from the hob, but that should be quite minimal. And also if I can get the same person to disconnect the gas that then reconnects it, then hopefully he does a decent deal on that. But otherwise, that's how to get a small, decent kitchen of a modern standard around five to 600 pounds. One thing that I haven't truly gone into detail on this video is the doors, but the doors, again, are very, very cheap. It usually costs around for a 600 millimeter door, I'd say about 40-ish pounds per door. And then for the drawers, you're usually talking about 15 pounds. So all in all, for one unit, you're looking at around 150, 155 pounds. So not too expensive for this very small kitchen. If you found this video useful, then definitely check out this one here, which is the full 3D render of the bite and all of the plans that we're going to be doing on this property. And if you haven't already subscribed, then definitely do to see the refurb in its full glory once we get the keys in the next few weeks.